but that's our enemy when we're trying to get into the air. My co-driver don't like it. It's Jimmy here and welcome back to another video. So you might have noticed recently I'm on a just a wee little bit of a rally binge. Just a wee bit. I've just been enjoying chucking cars about basically. That's what rally is. It's just chucking cars about but being in control of that. I'm sort of working up to the being in control bit but I can do the chucking about fairly well. Sign me up Toyota. But every time I get into rallying, I always find myself coming back to the same cars, the cars that interest me most, which are of course, Group B. I've done like 40,000 videos of these recently, so sorry if you're bored of them, but hopefully this is gonna be fun and interesting because I'm interested in it, and maybe you are too. And this video idea actually comes from the comments of my last video. Now my last video, I put the Notice 98T, an F1 car from the 80s, up against a Group B car uh, because I heard of this myth about a Group B car being almost as fast as an F1 car. You can check out that video, by the way, in the description. Uh, and the comments said, I'll have to put it on green somewhere. They wondered which would be faster, a Group B car, of course, that we know are weapons in both senses, really, or a modern WRC car, which have crazy wings and massive diffusers and like 4,500 LSDs. And luckily for us, this little known game called WRC 10 has both a modern WRC car and a Group B car. So what we're going to be doing today is running through a stage, comparing both of them and seeing what sort of times both cars put down. Now, just before I get into many inevitable crashes, if you do enjoy the video at any point, I'd very much appreciate you just tapping that like button and you can subscribe as well if you like. I know it's the basic YouTuber thing to be like, wow, well, like my videos, blah, blah, blah. but that's literally analytic show. If I ask you to do it, you might do it. So it's worth a go. Only if you like the content though. So here we are then in WRC 10. As you can see, I am level one. Timmy Broadbent. Clever. The first things first, we've got to pick the stage. And I can be quite unkind here to both cars and pick stages that might not benefit each of them. But seeing as there's recently been the finish rally where there have been just some absolutely insane on board from Alfred Evans and OJ and the like. Go watch those, by the way. They're just amazing. I'm now inspired to have a go myself. So we're going to go to Finland. We're going to go to uh, this stage, which... <laughs> Oh, uh, I can't, br you can't see it, but it is just the non-reverse version of the stage to the right there. Bila <laughs> Oh, We're going to go to the fill stage, all right? Uh, and we're going to go nice, easy conditions so we can get through in one piece. And the only Group B car that I think is worth taking is this, the Peugeot 205 T16 Evo 2 1986 just rolls off the tongue, that thing. And despite the model in this game being pretty fucking bad, I mean, this is some PS3 level era graphics on this car here. The physics are okay. And let's talk about numbers because numbers are very important. First of all, weight. This thing weighs only 1,000 kilograms, which is quite a bit less than the modern WRC car. We'll get into them figures a little bit later on. Also has more horsepower and more torque. 550 brake horsepower. And I've said it before, I'll say it again, I've driven a car with about that horsepower, and that is fucking fast. <laughs> Where I don't want that is on a gravel road. So also, this is a big old school rally car in the way that it has big turbo, small displacement. So what tends to happen, I'm going to do my best impression right now. You're driving along, mind your own business, put your foot down. No, oh, this is rather like fire! Uh, and you just, three, dead. So perfect really for the finish rally stages where it's all that. <laughs> Ah, oh, wiggle the knob. This is, this is how I get in the zone. A good furious knob wiggle. So here we are, about to start the stage here, and I have lengthened the gears a little bit in this and tried to soften it up a little bit so I can take the jumps a bit, a bit better. But other than that, we're running a fairly close to baseline setup on this Persia. Three, and of two, course, because we're in a historic car, one, it is an H-pattern gearbox. So let's go mind. then. Finish stage in a Group B car. Now, we've got a lot to talk about in this car in a kind of short space of time. I've also got to try and get through the stage in a uh, relatively quick time before we go from there. So this T16, you might know, uh, you might know it. Of course you fucking know it. One of the coolest Persians ever to go racing and rallying. And 
in every game I've ever driven this in, every sim I've ever driven it in, it's always been an absolute missile in a straight line. But it's sort of a missile that takes a little bit of time to, to get up to speed, if that makes sense. Anything below what feels like 5,000 RPM, you have nothing. Absolutely nothing. The brakes are definitely from the 80s. Once you hit that turbo, once you get all that boost, the thing just shoots forward. And you just left basically hanging on. So, on this sort of stage, where it's quite straight, it's quite fast, a lot of straight areas here. I expect this car to be fairly quick if my co-driver can stop being a little bitch and just read the notes so I can hear where I'm going. 200 k's nearly, I'm not quite sure that is a mile an hour, about 130, 125 mile an hour, something like that. Pretty damn fast in a car from the 80s, where if you do crash, uh, it just it just crumbles. You know BMG when you just crash a car at full speed into a rock? Rock! That's basically what happens at any speed in this car. There you go, fifth gear, and it just accelerates. Soon you the boost, it just basically perpetually accelerates until you hit the limiter or you change gear. This, I think, is where the car's going to struggle a little bit, this the slower stuff. Grab into one, go down into first gear, wait for the boost to build and have to shift gear almost immediately. First gear is basically just like a, oh, okay, this exists. You very much like you're operating a machine with a Group B car. And instead of extracting every little bit of speed as you do in a modern WRC car, it's all about how much, how much bravery do you have? How much confidence do you have that the car's going to stick, that you're going to keep the car going in the right direction? Oh, shit. Speaking in the right direction. Ah, oh, Jesus. Yeah, I know. Ooh. Oh, jeez. The brakes are so bad in this car. They barely do anything. Uh, break. Big break. Oh, my God. That car barely slowed down on the brakes for so long. That's where I think we're going to lose a lot of time to the modern WRC car, but through here, look at the speed, it picks up. So fast, coming out of the corner. Easy over the... <laughs> well, I say easy. You almost want to just, oh no, do my best to listen to the notes at the same time as Ramble. It's always difficult. Come on, keep the car going, keep the car going. Now I am airing a little bit on the side of caution, just so I can get through. Bloody drive! Bloody drag! Ow, get out! Get out! Okay. So let's take it through the stage there. We nearly crashed right at the end of it, but... And finish. But there you go. That was the Group B car. A time of a 4.28.5. So there are the results. Um, we did a... Well, here are my result anyway. I'm down at the bottom here. I did a, a 4.28. 11th fastest in the world, though. I think it's just lack of people taking part, to be honest. But uh, I'm not even the fastest goddamn Jimmy. There's a yam jazzy Jim there in seventh place who was uh, seven seconds faster. Shitters. But anyway, that was the Group B car. Fairly quick. Uh, I think, again, big characteristic is that you feel like you're always about to have an accident. That's all what this car is. You're always very close to having a very big crash. And it's how far you want to push that before you inevitably maybe clip something and have a massive, massive accident. So what we're going to try now is going to a modern WRC car and seeing how that compares to this madness from the 80s. Now, usually I'm a bit of a car weeb when I go for Toyota, but uh, I think it's something a bit different today. So we're going to try out the Hyundai. And as you can see, same specs as pretty much every other car here. 1,200 kilograms, that's 200 kilos more uh, than the Group B car. And only 380 horsepower in comparison to the Peugeot's 550, that's nearly 200 horsepower less there, and we're heavier, and we produce a bit less torque, I think, albeit at the same sort of range. So, on paper, this car should be slower. Should be. So now we've got the Hyundai, the uh, Hyundai, Hyundai, Hyundai. So now we've got the Hyundai <laughs> i20 WRC. And uh, again, on paper, don't look good for the modern WRC car, but I think you're about to find out that it's not all about what's on paper. I know in my head what I expect to happen here, but I'm interested to hear what you guys think before I make this run. Feel free to drop a comment below. Let me know what you think the results are going to be. See, look, I'm a great YouTuber. Please comment and, and, and drive my... Please, please comment and then I'll get more, more views because of the algorithm. <sighs> oh, God. Uh, 
Three, right, let's go. Two, one, go. Through the gears a lot quicker in this car, of course. First difference is we aren't using an H pattern box, we've got a sequential. I would use my paddles as they would in the real car, but unfortunately, for some reason, they don't work in this game very well. Check that out. But you're already seeing just how much more speed I can carry into the corners. With the Group B car, it was a bit more of a process getting the car set up. For this, it's just throw the fucker in, get on the throttle, and let the LSD sort it out. And that's pretty much how these cars are now. A lot more ele uh, electronic goodies on these cars than would come on the Group B car. Group B car is basically just engines with turbo strapped to chassis. This is a lot more sophisticated. What that means is I have a lot more confidence in the corners. I can really, really throw it about. I'm not really have to worry too much about what the car does. Interested though through here, what we're going to get with this uh, the downforce of a car. Doesn't seem to be doing its job so far as I'm bigger. Hang on to it. Limited by gear here, but I'm not too bothered to be honest. Just a tap of the brake every now and then to make sure the car is uh, keeping somewhat straight and true. Oh bloody hell. Code driver becoming rap god. You're seeing just how much confidence I have in this car compared to the Group B car. I can just put it into pretty much any situation and just bring it out of it. It feels like it's a lot more agile, which you'd expect from a car that is, and it's going to hurt to hear this if you're a Group B fan, nearly 40, ne 40 years newer. Nearly 40 years newer. But the fact that I'm even here comparing it just shows you the legacy that Group B left behind. Sorry. Square right, bail in, 70. So through this section here, the car feels so much more able to change direction quickly. With the Peugeot, it's a sequence. This it feels like you just dip and you go and dump. Get through the stage nice thing. We've got a 428 to beat. We're about halfway into the stage at the moment. I feel like we're going to be quite a bit up as it stands. There you go. Easy peasy. And I think. If we compare the two, Group B was very much power first. That was the first thing that came out of it. How much power can we put into this car to get out of the corner as quick as we can with our four-wheel drive and go as fast as we can in a straight line? At some point, someone went, actually, oh my god, let's try and make this thing quick in the corners. And that's sort of where modern regulations are now. It's going much more for cornering speed and much more for reliability. Which is why maybe these cars aren't as entertaining to see an onboard with, which I disagree with actually. Watching these cars go around is, is more mad than Group B, I think. Some people may not think that. But the actual speed of the thing is something that should be respected. I don't, know, I don't understand why modern WRC doesn't have the following. Oh, there's a ghost there in the background. I wonder who that belongs to. Not looking good for the Group B car. Easy. Oh, I'm just downshifting all I don't need to there. It's sweaty work driving this thing. I don't know why I wore a hoodie. Always somewhere on the max max speed. It's a much more pleasant car to drive as well, this. Part of me does prefer driving the Group B car because it's just this manual experience. Bloody hell. But this thing... It's like driving a modern F1 car. You feel like the car can outdrive you. It's too fast for you. There's that bloody drone again. Soon we're coming to the end of the stage again. 428 to beat. A bit wide. Oh no! The confidence got the better of me. But even with. Even with clouting the wall there. That lost us about maybe four seconds, five seconds. Even with that, it was still a good chunk quicker. I can't tell you how much quicker. I'm down here somewhere. Where am I? How far? I've lost a Deadpool. Ah, oh, guys, that ain't looking good for Jimmy. Well, there you go. 198th in the world. I think I very much uh, lost a lot of places with that little mistake at the end. But I want to keep it in because... I didn't crash in the Group B car, I did in this car. I'm not quite sure what that says. Maybe pushing a bit too hard there, but still eight seconds faster with an instant as well. It just goes to show you how crazy these modern WRC cars are. So there you have it, a 428 for our Group B car and a 420 for our modern WRC car. Um, I knew this was going to be the result as soon as I booted up the game. 
these modern WRC cars, for, for, for whatever reason, just don't seem to get the appreciation that they deserve, in my opinion. The cars that we have now are the fastest rally cars of all time, and they look fast, in my opinion, too. From any onboard, any uh, external camera of a car sliding by, kicking up leaves and dirt as it slides on through the corner, you can see the speed of the thing. But, as always, I go back to the Group B car and think, yeah, but h pattern gearbox big turbo scary it holds that same sort of same sort of love as i'm sure old f1 fans have for the, the v12s and the v10 and stuff like that it's just a different sort of driving but ultimately the modern wrc Ow. car is quite a bit quicker the nub substantially quicker but the fact that i'm comparing a 40 year old car to a modern car just goes to show how big of an impact that era of rallying had on motorsport and on me personally, even though I wasn't around to experience it. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Always fun to do a little bit of rallying, uh, even if I'm bad at it. If you did enjoy the video, feel free to tap that like button. You can subscribe as well if you want. And as always, I've got to say a big thank you to my patrons and to my channel sponsors. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. It is much appreciated. Take care. Have an awesome day. Try not to bin your rally car. See you all next time.